Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thanks very much for watching that EWAX removal compilation video today. Uh, two patients in this compilation video. Now you can see uh, this first patient here, what looks appears at first glance to be a little bit of wax. Now there is a little bit attached to this piece of skin we're seeing here, but what we're actually seeing here is skin that's uh, come away from the canal wall. Now remember we talked about this migration process uh, of skin, that, that sort of epithelial layer getting towards the outer part of the ear canal and then hardening up, breaking away and then coming away with the wax. Well, when it transitions from that sort of inner two thirds, which is the bony portion of the ear canal, so that the more sort of medial portion is that inner two thirds and then that bony portion butts up against the cartilaginous portion so the outer portion of the ear canal the more flexible portion of the ear canal well where those two meet is something called the isthmus now what you get sometimes um, with a lot of patients I see a lot in more elderly patients as well is as that skin migrates over from that bony portion to the cartilaginous portion, what happens is you'll get that surface layer will detach, but it won't just detach in one plane, it'll detach as it's done here, all the way around the canal. Now unfortunately what we've got then is quite floppy skin, so it hasn't hardened up yet. And as it sort of closes in from all sides, it sort of closes down like this, and then that can cause a few problems. It starts to sort of harden up and then it discolors a little bit. So what we're doing here is just removing this. Now we've switched down to the, uh, this is the fine end here, the reason we're switching down, we're, we're taking a lot of skin away. It's very soft, very floppy, so we don't want any clarinetting. So if you're new to the channel, clarinetting sometimes happens if you've got uh, usually skin getting sucked inside <coughs> the uh, standard size tube. It vibrates up and down really quickly and it causes quite a high pitched, quite loud shrill whistle in the ear which can be, you know, sometimes be quite uncomfortable for the patient. So we always try and minimize that as much as we possibly can. Uh, and that's when we use the smaller tube, less chance of it vibrating up and down, so causing a few issues. But you can see it's cleared away really, really well. You can see the eardrum beyond it there. Um, there we go. So this is actually, I think this is the second patient of compilation, I'm not too sure. Um, so what we've got here is a more sort of solid block of wax here. You can see it's quite dry. Uh, this is the standard size ulnar tube you can see here. So we're just trying to work this one out. Uh, don't forget guys, if you do need earwax removal, uh, you can always check out our channel page and that will give you a link to our website. You can book yourself an appointment. You can come and sit along and see myself and Taylor. Uh, also, if you enjoy the videos, you can always give us a thumbs up. You can always uh, like, and subscribe as well and follow the channel uh, that would be absolutely fantastic thank you so much um you can also comment as well there's a couple of people mentioned in the comments about the mastoid cavity clearance yesterday um there was a few uh, one person asked me what was the youngest person I've ever taken wax that there is i think they were just under three years old we don't make a habit of it because they are you know ear canals are very very tiny and toddlers don't tend to like to sit still for very long uh so it's so we tend to see sort of more older children really um I'll come back to the master in a second. Let's see here. Can I look in nice and clear? Yeah. Oh, I was all the first patient. There you go. So two centimeters, three quarters of an inch of worth of wax and that uh, skin there, guys, coming away. Um, as far as the master, a couple of people asked, you know, is what you see the sort of cartilaginous portion of the ear canal? Um, yeah, it's a mixture of, uh, it's mostly bone, i got to be honest. Uh, you do see, obviously, the cartilaginous portion is, is the outermost portion. Uh, you do see that bit. Um, a couple of people asked about the sort of fuzzy layer. Well spotted, you guys. You A couple of people thought well is that a fungal infection uh, it's not a fungal infection um, and the reason I know it's not a fungal infection is when somebody has a mastoid uh, operation even when people have perforated perforate the eardrums as well or grommets uh, they're always advised to keep their ears nice and dry now the most common way that people do that here in the UK uh, and the advice they've been given for years and years and years is get some cotton wool uh, you call it something different in the US, I, I can't remember what you call it, but cotton wool we hear, call it here in the UK, and you coat it in Vaseline, and then you pop that inside the ear canal when you're in a bath or a shower or anything like that, and the water just runs off the Vaseline. Um, so what you're actually seeing in the ear canal is not a fungal infection, you're seeing remnants from the cotton wool that have just stuck to the surface layer of the skin that's on the outermost edge of that mastoid cavity. Um, I think that was the two most common questions in there. Uh, I don't think there was any others. I, I, I did have a quick scan this morning before I come along. Um, so you can see, anyway, it's back to this reaction rule. So you can see we've got this really kind of tough um, 
hard plug of wax. What we've also got, it's very similar to the first patient here, we've got this sort of detachment of skin and it's very dry. You can see when you look at the skin, you get these tight little white lifts all the way along and the wax then really tends to dry out. There's a piece of skin you can see getting sucked in on just to the right hand side of the plug there. So that's getting sucked inside the, uh, the, the standard size ulna tube. But look at this. This is a hard, hard layer. Now the difficulty here with this particular patient, you've got an ear canal that starts like this in its most lateral portion and then very quickly drops to this shape and then widens back out. Now, unfortunately in this case, because the canal walls are so dry, there's no uh, oil for the, for the wax to absorb on its way down as it migrates down. So we've ended up with a mixture of dry skin and wax and that's caused this plug to get very dry. Unfortunately, it kind of forms on this part just beyond that narrow section there, uh, which is proving difficult to get through. Um, now, my advice to these kind of patients is, you know, if you can use some olive oil, use some olive oil on a regular basis. It's really going to help to keep this nice and soft but also come along more regularly um, because the wax we can get wax out that's, that's smaller pieces you can see it's gone all the way down to the eardrum that's actually resting against the eardrum there or your tympanic membrane if you want to give it a technical tip uh, but it's right down in that ear canal we can see we're just just managing to get the standard size on the tube through there now we have a bit of a problem here because as we said the, beyond that pinch is like this so the, the piece of wax is formed this shape like a penny but the difficulty is I've got to get through a gap like that at the moment it's side on um, so I'm going to need to try and flick this somehow uh, in the most sensitive part of the year so I'm trying not to sort of just try and yank it through because that would be really uncomfortable for the patient especially when it's hardened up in this shape if I can just turn it there we go now if I can flick it from the side we should be able to lift him. There you go. And there he goes all the way through. Um, but you could really see that dryness. Now, this happens quite a lot in patients, you know, especially if they suffer with maybe some sort of eczema or, or psoriasis on the outer part of the ear canals. You'll tend to find the inner post part, portion of the ear canal uh, will be very, very dry like this. Um, don't forget, we produce an oil in our ear canals, which helps to soften the wax and soften the skin just before it comes away. Uh, we produce less and less every year, so we end up with um, dry sort of patches around the outside edge or very dry wax around the outside edge. So there we go. That's what we removed. So it was a centimetre's worth of wax. They're just under half an inch. Uh, well, guys, thank you so much for watching our video today. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. If you want wax removal, check out the channel page, and you can book yourself in with the lovely Mr. Taylor Green or myself. Um, and as always, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of your ears and take care of one another and i'll see you again real soon bye everyone